taon-taon, tuwing dumarating ang pasukan, ang palaging tanong na nakararami ay, Handa ba tayo? Kakulangan ng silid-aralan sa ilang eskwelahan, sinalubong ng mga estudyante sa unang araw ng pasukan. Sapat ba ang ating mga pangangailangan para mas makapagbahagi ng kaalaman sa bawat kabataan? Ngunit taon-taon din, sa kabilaman ng mga hamon na dumarating, sama-sama natin itong tinutugunan sa abot ng ating kakayanan. Hanggang sa... Hati ang opinyon ng nakararami sa pagpapatupad ng distance learning dahil sa mga problema gaya ng mabagal na internet connection at kakulangan ng gadget na maaaring gamitin sa pag-aaral. Naging usap-usapan yung pag-delay muna ng pasukan hanggang sa susunod na taon kung kailan mas handa ang mga bata, mga magulang, teacher at mga paaralan. Marami man ang tutol sa pagbabalik skwela, may mga solusyon at paraan na maari nating gamitin para ituloy ang pagpapalawak ng kaalaman. Sa panahong na ilagay sa panganib ang pagpapakalat ng karunungan sa mga kabataan, atin pa ding ginagampanan ang ating pangako para patuloy na itaas ang antas ng ating edukasyon sa panahon man ng pandemya. Ika nga, learning should never stop. Anumang pagsubok, kaya nating lagpasan basta sama-sama. Nagtatanong, natutuwa, lumalawak ng mundo niya. Masdan mo siya, namamangha, marami na nagagawa. Ramdam ko kung gaano kalaki ang effort ng mga guro para lang maibahagi ang nalalaman nila sa mga bata. Doble ang hirap nila sa paghahanda. Mas nakikita ko ngayon yung paikisa ng mga magulang, yung involvement nila, para maitawid namin ang kaalaman para sa mga bata. Mas tumibay ang partnership namin to make home study work. Malaking bagay sa akin itong Barangay Handbook. Mas lalo kong naiintindihan ang pangangailangan ng aking mga nasasakupan. Lalo na ngayon nasa gitna tayo ng isang malawakang krisis. Nakakatulong din ito sa kung paano namin minamanage ang peace and order sa bawat lugar ng aming barangay. Sinisiguro din namin na mabahagi sa bawat barangay tanod at mga volunteer health workers ang aming mga natutunan sa pamamagitan ng mga seminars at counseling. Since sa ibang bansa nagtatrabaho si Mama at Papa, sinisigurado ko na nasusubaybayan ko ang kapatid ko sa kanyang online classes. Ginagawan ko ng paraan para maturuan siya sa kanyang mga lessons at mga assignment. Mahirap sa umpisa, but I need to step up para sa kinibukasan niya. Noong panahong nangyari ang pandemya, nahinto ang mga negosyo, nagsipakulong ang mga tao, tumigil ang ating mundo. Kaalaman lamang ang muling magpapabalik nito. Karunungan para muling maibalik ang buhay ng tao. Sa aming ikapitumpong taon, handog namin ay pasasalamat sa lahat ng mga naging kasapi sa misyong maging gabay ng bawat batang Pilipino tungo sa kanilang mga methiin. Mula sa bawat individual na bahagi ng Rex na patuloy tumutugon sa kanilang tungkulin sa kabila ng pandemya hanggang sa inyong mga tagapagtaguyod ng edukasyon na patuloy na pagsuporta tayong lahat sama-sama Hawa kamay ang pag-asa gagabayan kita dahil para sa bata para sa bata aking pagsisika para sa bata para sa bata Aking hangal at pag-asa, pangarap ko'y kung anong pangarap niya. Buong puso ko, buong puso ko, buong puso ko, para sa bawat bata. Para sa bata, para sa bata.
Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that everyone is safe, healthy, and well. About 26 years ago, I earned a bachelor's degree in family life and child development at the University of the Philippines. And years after college, I have been given the opportunity to work for the president, Joseph Ejercito Estrada in Malacanang, and then at the office of Senator Peng Lacson at the Senate of the Philippines. I've also been given the privilege and the mandate to serve the local government of Kainta Rizal as its councillor for two terms and another two terms as its vice mayor. And with the training that I had in UP, I have always advocated for early childhood care and development and have always been supportive of its cause, no matter where life led me or leads me in the future. This is Pia Shuk Velasco, and I am very honored to be your host today. I am happy to welcome all of you to the premiere episode of the Educampion Local Governance Webinar Series. This is an event organized by Rex Education as part of its Educampion initiatives in partnership, of course, with the ECCD or the Early Childhood Care and Development Council and the Center for Local Governance and Professional Development Incorporated. Today, we learn from the local government educampions as they share learnings and best practices from early childhood care and development to supporting learning continuity plans to barangay justice, security and disaster preparedness, and barangay accountability. And as our excitement escalates, let us now begin today's session by offering a prayer to our Almighty Father. And this shall be followed by the singing of our Philippine National Anthem. In respectful presence of our brothers and sisters across boundaries and faiths, let us all join in prayer and worship and gratitude and for guidance. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of life and all its joys. We thank you for today, for all its challenges in all its splendor. We thank you for the gift of one another. O God of infinite mercy and wisdom, only in unity with your will can all our toils have true meaning. Transform us into willing and able stewards of this world and its future. Bring us together to work with understanding and compassion as we toil and grow weary we pray for renewed strength and resolve. As we experience pain and sorrow, let us be reminded of untold good beyond. As we see pain and suffering, let us be instruments of your peace and extensions of your loving and healing hands. As we gather here today, bless us all that our collective knowledge be tempered and guided by your wisdom. Grant us clarity of vision to see the common good amidst all distractions. Endow us with humility and purity of heart to transcend all differences and reservations. When we leave this gathering, let us be the change we seek. As we endeavor to practice what we learn, let us be the good we want to see in others. As we work for our learners and their future, let it be that your will be done. In solemn silence, let us conclude with our own personal prayer.
mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Hello again. Before anything else, please be reminded by the following house rules flashed on the screen. And so we start. Curious ka ba sa title ng ating webinar series? Educampion Local Governance Series. I'm sure we all know what local governance means, but do we actually know what Educampion or being an Educampion means? To enlighten us about Educampion and the series, and also to welcome us all, may we hear from the Chief Executive of Rex Education, Mr. Don Timothy Buhai. Thank you, Ms. Sophia Shock Velasco, our wonderful MC, who used to be a local government official and still an advocate of ECCD. To the President of the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, Governor Dax Kua of Quirino Province, and all local government officials and associate and employees here today. To our partners, in this endeavor, the Early Childhood Care and Development or ECCD Council, headed by Executive Director Teresita G. Insyong, who is also our main resource speaker for today, to the Center of Local Governance and Professional Development, headed by my good friend, Dr. Sani Obanya. Special greetings and thanks to all local government units of Montinlupa, Mabalakad, Pampanga, and San Antonio, Quezon, our LGU exemplars for today's episode of the Educampion Local Governance Series. To everyone else here today, good afternoon, and thank you for coming. In 2019, Rex Education launch our Educampion initiatives. Our objectives include rallying, inspiring, and empowering all education duty bearers. Educampion is living up to our pledge of accompanying all Filipino learners throughout his lifelong journey. We see education as something that happens not only within the four walls of the classroom, but as a continuous process, starting when we first begin to comprehend and understand as children, up to adulthood, when we become the best version of ourselves, and even beyond that. We see education duty bearers to be not only the teachers, and the schools, but everyone 
who has a direct or indirect role in ensuring that education happens. While the government is the primary duty bearer, all of us are morally obligated to do what we can to respect, to protect, and to fulfill every learner's right to quality education. The Edocampion Local Governance Series was designed to celebrate our LGU duty bearers, especially at the barangay level. More than just for general awareness, we hope for the series to become a source of learning and inspiration. Hindi lamang para sa ating mga kawani ng barangay at lokal na pamahalan, kundi para sa lahat na may gustong alamin, matuto, at makilahok. The first two episodes of this series is devoted to early childhood care and development to discuss its importance and issues related to the implementation of child development or daycare centers. I am sure we all know how the success of our learners in school and in life depends greatly on how they are prepared and cared for during the early years. For many Filipino families, this depends in turn on how effective and well-managed our ECCD system is. Hindi ko na po papahabain ang mga mensaheng ito para meron tayong mas mahabang oras para sa talakayan. Kasama ng aming partner institution, ang union of local authorities of the Philippines, ang ECCD Council, ang CLGPD, at ang buong pamilya ng Rex Education, inihandog namin ang Edukampion Local Governance Series para sa bata, para sa mamamayan, para sa bayan, para sa ating kaalaman, pagkatuto, at makabuluhang pakikilahok. Maraming salamat at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, Mr. Don Timothy Buhain for that very inspiring message that we are all education duty bearers, morally obligated to respect, protect, and fulfill every learner's right to quality education. That is what uh, an Aedo Campion is all about. Now, that is something we should all bear in mind and take to heart. So fellow Educampions, let's go on with our learning session. And as mentioned by Mr. Buhain, the first two episodes of this series focuses on early childhood care and development. The first episode is the ECCD in the Philippines, part one, which will be discussing laws, policies, programs, and systems, and focuses on the ECCD system in general, while episode two is uh, the ECCD in the Philippines, part two, ECCD in action, and focuses on center-based and home-based ECCD delivery. To tell us more about these things, I am honored to introduce our main speaker for today. She is the executive director and vice chairperson of the Early Childhood Care and Development Council. Let us all welcome Dr. Teresita Grafilo Enchong. Magandang hapon po, everyone. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, I would like to thank the Rex Education for the leadership of the CEO, Don Timothy Buhain. I would like also to thank our one of our members of the governing board, um, member, the uh, governor of the governor Puwa, and of course, the, the members of the city council governing board, and to all the local governments who are units who are, who are here to, today. I'm, I'm going to talk, as Ms. Pia said, about the laws, the policies, and the system of the Early Years Act of 2013. To start with, let me just quote 
the Article 1 of page 603, which says that the child is one of the most important assets of the nation and every effort should be exerted to promote his welfare and enhance his opportunities for a useful and happy life. It has never changed. This code is the PD6 author is the Child Welfare Code during the March and May. Um, when we are talking of uh, early childhood, we are referring to the health, nutrition, early education, and social services developing programs that provide for the basic holistic needs of young children from zero to four and to promote optimum growth and development. It also involves the multifaceted processes of development like physical, cognitive, emotional, social, spiritual, covering from period, the period from pregnancy through the transition from home or ECCD programs into the school. As an outcome, the council is looking at a child who is physically healthy, emotionally sound, socially competent, and ready to learn. The ECCD did not come overnight. It has a long journey, and it started during 1964 as a program of UNICEF project under the Social Welfare Administration then. And in 1978, during martial law, the there is a decree which says that every barangay should have a daycare center. And then post, after a decade hence, the RA 16 talks about the total development and protection of children program. In 1991, there was a rebound of the government and it is the, the a passage or enactment of the local government codes, which brings down to the local government unit all essential and basic services. It has greatly changed the offering of the child development um, programs. In 2000, the first comprehensive policy and national the system was enacted. This is Republic of 1980. But after a decade or so, henceforth, it, during the review of the law, the spirit of the law, there was, it was found out that there was a gap between the law and the implementation. As such, the then president, Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo, called the ECCD from the CWC and brought it under the office of the president. And then in 2013, this is the landmark legislation that we are anchoring our program, the Republic Act 1014 or the Early Years Act has been signed into law. The president then was President Benigno Aquino and it was on March 26, 2013. This act is an, uh, a recognition of the age from zero to eight years as the first crucial stage of educational development and is strengthening the early childhood care and development system and of course, appropriating funds therefore. Let me just talk very shortly and briefly, the salient features of AM, the early years up. In the declaration of its policy, one of the policies is to promote the rights of children to survival, development, and special protection with full recognition of the nature of childhood and as well as the need to provide developmentally appropriate experiences to address their needs and to support parents as primary caregivers as the first teacher. This is the first ever law that talks of our teachers as the first teachers at home. And it is very appropriate right now. And moving on, children ages uh, zero to eight is the first crucial stage of education and development, which has never been um, stipulated before. And the Early Childhood Care and Development Council responsibility are children ages zero to four, while five to eight is within the, the uh, Department of Education because it's, it's a kinder to three, grade three. In section eight, we, we it calls for the strengthening of ECCD Council to ensure that the states focus on building strong foundation for the development and learning of zero to four years old because this is the foundation year and it is the transition as well. And also ensure the sustained interagency and multi-sectoral collaboration. 
very specifically the roles of uh, the roles and responsibility of the ACC Council is included in Section 7. In consultation with the coordinating committees at the provincial, city, municipal, and barangay levels, the ACCD Council shall be responsible for establishing national standards, developing policies and programs, and providing technical assistance and support to ACCD service providers. And the Department of Education shall also recognize the national ECCD programs as the foundation of learning continuum and shall promote it for all children from age zero to four years old. It's the reason why the Department of Education are requesting, is requesting that all children going to kindergarten shall bring with them the ECCD checklist, which is the profile of the child who is enrolling in kindergarten. The Department of Education, the DSWD, the DOH, and the NNC shall continue to provide develop, developing program support, supplementary learning materials, reference materials, and supplemental nutrition and health care. The Union of Local Authority of the Philippines shall encourage the mainstreaming of ECCD programs and disseminate information regarding ECCD programs among its leagues, among the local government units. Similarly, the local government units from uh, which the child development centers and daycare workers are situated are given the following mandate. The LGU shall include allocations from their SEF and GAD fund in addition to other local funds to be utilized for the following purposes. Actually, there is already a memorandum circular signed by the DBM, the DepEd, then Department of Interior Local and Local Government. It all already provides guidelines for the utilization of SEF funds and the GAD funds. And on top of that, the LGUs are expected to support the implementation of their ECCD programs, to organize support for parent cooperatives to establish community-based programs, which is very appropriate in this time of pandemic, and to provide counterpart funds for the continuing professional development of their ECCD public service providers and provide facilities for the conduct of ECCD programs. Let me now introduce to you the ECCD Council and the national ECCD system. The council governing board is composed of seven members. Um, the ex officio chairperson is the secretary of education. The ECCD council actually is attached to the department of education. The board members, the other members are the secretaries of health of the department of social welfare and development, the executive director of the national nutrition council, the president of the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines and a, and a private practitioner and expert in ACCD. And um, the vice chairperson is the executive director of the Early Childhood Care and Development Council. In the slides, you will see the vision. By 2030, the ACCD Council shall be fully implemented a national system for early childhood care and development throughout the country that is comprehensive, integrative, and sustainable. Our mission is to continue to, nation, to contribute rather to nation building by ensuring that all Filipino children ages zero to four are provided with developmentally appropriate experiences to address their holistic needs. And our mandate is to implement that system. And the system that I am referring to is the full range of health, nutrition, early education, and social services developing programs that provide for the basic holistic needs of young children from age zero to four years and to promote an optimum development. So you see, the ECCD is not only early childhood education, but it is an integrative sort of uh, services. Let me now talk about the, the components of this system. The ECCD curriculum. This is this the curriculum focuses on the total development and take into account the aids, individual and sociocultural appropriateness. It shall promote the delivery of complementary and integrative services of health, nutrition, early childhood education, sanitation, and cultural activities. And it is written in 
in English and Tagalog. However, the, the, the teacher, the child development teachers and CDC shall use the child first language as the media of instruction. The parent education involvement actually is our uh, venue for harnessing and developing parents' strength as providers of ECCD program at home and as active partners of other stakeholders, as advocates and, and partners of community leaders. The human resource development program is actually a mechanism for developing and capacitating our child development workers and teachers and other service provider. This is one of the biggest challenges that the ECCD has because of the uh, diverse uh, educational uh, qualification of our teachers and, and workers. The ECCD management is the a continuing process of planning, implementation, supervision, financial management, and monitoring and evaluation and report and reporting to uh, agency concern and shall encourage the active involvement of and building capacity of service providers, the parents, and the local government. So um, if you notice, the system is actually the whole, uh, the whole law by itself. Let me go now to the ECCD goals. We are envisioning that before the child, at year five, before the child goes to kindergarten, the child is ready for kindergarten. Because actually this is the missing link. The children are never ready for the kindergarten. And our other goal is to strengthen collaboration between and among national and local government agencies, including the NGOs for efficiency, and sustainability of the ECCD program, and also increase awareness of communities and families in their pivotal role as primary service provider. According to Mandela, it takes the whole village to educate the child. According to ECCD, it takes the whole nation to build, to educate the child. Also among our goal is the inclusion of children with diverse learning needs with provision for appropriate and reasonable accommodation. This includes children with special needs, children in the IP community and other vulnerable at risk and marginalized sector. And we establish a, mecha a mechanism for the systematic professionalization of ECCD service providers. Let me now introduce to you the new ECC, the Philippine education system. If you notice, the ECCD is actually the foundation and the foundation should be strong. And the government is encouraged both local and national to invest more in ECCD because if the child is prepared going to kindergarten, then there will be a lot of benefits for the child. And, and uh, ECCD is anchored on the law, the K to secondary is also anchored on all the laws. So we are looking at a productive child. We are looking at a child who is ready to learn and to contribute to nation building. Why do we invest in early childhood? There are so many reasons why we invest in, in, in early childhood. Results of the neurosciences research has shown that there are many benefits of investing in early childhood. It is also considered as a social equity, which will probably prevent the uh, intergenerational poverty. And children and women's welfare because while the children are in the center, the mother can earn and thus improve the earning of the family. While the child is in the center, there are health benefits because they are better fed, they are better uh, attended to. And of course, education is the right of every child. The economic benefits there is that at the end, these kids will be very, very productive. We are signatories also to the national and international commitment on child development. Next. Why do we invest in ECCD? As I said earlier, it shows that the person's ability to learn is developed in the first few years of life when brain development is most rapid. And if we can attach them early, 90% at age five is already developed and then 80 to 90%. So when they go to the formal school, there is, there is the opportunity that they should learn early is already lost. 
And it is also said that the early experience is the architect of human brain, putting in place is both the foundation and scaffolding for a future development. Um, here, very briefly, it, the slide shows you that before, even before birth, there is only there is already sensing pathways for vision, for hearing, for language, and for higher cognitive function. But again, while it is being said there, if not stimulated, if not utilized, then there is a winning period where, where this, this uh, formation will not be um, taken on. Next. Let us look at the new the synopsis of a newborn child. They are disconnected. Two years later, it provided with proper stimulation and learning and uh, environment, then there are so many connections. And it is these connections that we tell us if the child is properly um, provided with uh, early learning. In the next slide, you will see that um, this is the brain of unstimulated. The synapses are disconnected, disjointed, while the brain of a child who are stimulated and provided with early learning is, yes, is, is really connected, are really connected with each other. Next. Let me go to and we'll get a, a lot of uh, we'll get a lot of uh, inspiration from the from Heckman, uh, a Nobel laureate of uh, University of Chicago, and he said, and I quote: "The highest rate of return in early childhood development comes from investing as early as possible from birth through age five in disadvantaged families, starting at age three or four." is a little too late as it fails to recognize that skills beget skills in complementary and dynamic way. Effort should therefore be focused on the first years for the greatest efficiency and effectiveness. The best investment is in quality early childhood development from birth to five for disadvantaged children and their families. Uh, the four benefits of the investing in early childhood development is it can prevent achievement gap. When the child is not provided with early education, the child goes to kindergarten, which is already the formal school, already with a learning gap, the Hadunaga gap. It improves health outcomes. It can boost earning in later age, and it can make dollars and cents. Greater investment for children to the greater investment is to uh, for children to see greater returns in education, health, and productivity. Next. In order for us to achieve our mandate, we have developed the system framework for, uh, this is the system framework, and it is divided into three pronged approach. We have the access, actually, with equity. We have the quality, efficiency, and sustainability, and we have accountability. For our access, we expanded the equitable access and quality of ACCD programs by providing or establishing the ACCD uh, Child Developing Center. If you know, this is the this is a, a, a real picture of the Child Development Center. If you notice in the middle picture, these are the infant and toddlers. As early as uh, two years, I mean two months, they're already in the school. But don't worry because the child development teacher, I mean the parents are with their children and the parents are the one handling them. And in the upper, in the upper uh, level, we the, the, uh, the pretty one, and in the left and uh, corner, here are the pretty two, which they are three years old and four years old. So practically from zero to four. The National Child Development Center is a model child developing center that we would like to put in every LGU established. It is a conversion point of integrated services such as health, nutrition, early education, and social services. It has also served as a resource and training center for developmentally appropriate materials, for, for training of teachers, for uh, the, the transfer of educational technology, and it, it becomes a training center of the barangay. It is a laboratory for conducting research on ECCD and a venue for ECCD related activities. Then we also have the phase two of the NCDC program is the conversion of the daycare center to child development center. 
um, it, it, it is not actually the same as the Child Development Center, which uh, has its uh, uniform floor area, but it we provided them with also the, the curriculum, the training, and the materials. And for every um, for every city and municipality that we grant a child development center, then there are other ten that will be converted. Then quality for quality and efficiency, we have the following human resource development. So for we have an institution base, which is actually the training of the supervisor, who are the local social welfare development officers entitled leading and managing and integrated ECCD programs. And as much as they are the supervisors, they should also be provided with an in-depth knowledge on how to organize, to administer, and to supervise and manage the Child Development Center or the ECCD programs in, in, on the ground. And then we also have a scholarship program for child development teachers and workers who are going to uh, manage that national child development features. Similarly, we also have, and uh, these are some of the pictures that you see. Go ahead, Noel. And our our training, even if they are in the, in in state university and colleges, are not all lectures. We have the simulation, we have the role modeling, we have workshop, and we have experiential like um, uh, practicum, so that the teachers are really into. Uh, practice on how to conduct a quality ECCD programs in their own center. The other training that we have are um, the on-site. And then we have an induction program for service provider. When we see induction, this is the immersion. For every child development center that we uh, establish, it, we are making sure that all the service provider in all the daycare centers or child development center in that area are also trained and are familiar with the law, are familiar with the curriculum, and are familiar with the assessment tools, including the barangay, because they are the ones that actually are on the, in the particular um, child development center. So here, we, uh, we have also the integration. This is a prelude to bringing the teachers who will be handling the, child, the National Child Development Center by enrolling them in the um, state university and colleges. But here we give them one week intensive training on what is supposed to be a developmentally appropriate practices for early childhood care and development. And uh, the only problem here is the moment they are trained and then they are not provided with uh, um, appropriate appropriate plantilla then be transferred to where It is not a loss of investment of the government, but it is the investment of the local government that is lost when they transfer to the um, Department of Education or worse to the private school. Then let, let there is the advocacy and, um, and uh, advocacy and parent education and involvement and advocacy and, and mobilization committee. We have piloted several programs like the home base and we have crafted a book on inclusion. We also have a radio program which is um, which serves as a platform to discuss very timely topics about ECCD and parenting. And during this time of pandemic it has become very, very uh, good source of information to the parents and the child developing center. We have also initiated several webinars because we like what Dr. I mean, well, Mr. Don Timothy Buhayna uh, said that learning must continue. Even as the time pandemic, we continue. We continue to provide uh, our annual forum for provincial social welfare development um, officers. We also provide our uh, the Barangay Summit and. Uh, and also we have a, a several series of webinars and conferences for our child development uh, teachers and workers. We also have an outdoor program. This one is the Camp, uh, as the Camp Bulilit, a program for, chil for children and, and, and parents as a camp. It serves as the official launching of the NCDCs that provides early learning opportunities for children two to four years. It engages the whole family. 
In this picture, you will see that the mayor is providing uh, is, is providing the storytelling. Uh, we there are no uh, let it, uh, uh, there are no um, swimming pool in the National Child Start, uh, Child Developing Center. This is in collaboration with the um, with with other state universities and other uh, facilities. They are providing their swimming pool for free for children to to do their camping. Then we also have the Bayanihan. Um, Bayan, Bulilit Bayanihan, Bayanihan Bulilit. It is, is similar to the Brigade Escuela of the Department of Education. It's a one day event ideally held before the registration and it captures the Bayanihan spirit of the community to engage in ECC activities and services. You will see in the picture here that the parents are cleaning and repainting and some are preparing the materials. And then we have also our governing board meeting is part of our interagency collaboration. In this particular uh, board meeting, we had uh, we have an observer from other countries to more timorelistic. We would like to observe how our ECCD governing board is being advocated. And then also Bhutan is coming. We also conduct a cluster conferences and consultation dialogues with local government officials, several clusters, Luzon, twice in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we have the mayors talking about what they wanted to do with their constituents and how they are going to improve it. And uh, we conducted a stakeholder summit where we encourage the, the um, local government who are there to support um, the ECCD. As such, there was the declaration on leadership and early learning and commitment of support that we all signed. And uh, we were very proud to we are very proud to show this to our other neighboring countries, Asian and the Pacific, where we are members of the ARNIC. And so we have uh, our mayor are very focused on education, not, not only education, but early childhood education. We also develop actually an international cooperation. We took our inspiration from Colombia. Colombia's uh, early childhood education emanates from the president himself. So that is why all the ministers and all the offices have a line budget for ECCD. And all the, from, from north to south, east and west, they have this beautiful building of early childhood education and a beautiful curriculum. And then we partner also with results for development, Asia Pacific and ARNET, and then step-by-step step, and International Relief Foundation. These are not donor agencies. These are, we also take you and inspiration and their inputs are valuable to, to in improving our program and in the, in the Philippines. Then of course, I would like to commend also our uh, local partnership with non-government and government organization, like the ones that are looking at the, at the slides right now. And we would like to, I, at this point, I'd like to thank them for their, for their uh, support. They are, uh, they are having ECCD programs in a particular area. That's why we had this roundtable discussion that we are going to map where they are so that they will not duplicate the area, they will not duplicate the services, and in the impact, we are coordinating with this other. For accountability, we already have business and quality assurance. We already have uh, a monitoring desk during this pandemic. And then we conducted several webinars to provide technical assistance because we actually have a learning continu continuity plan, which is that child developing teachers and workers are implementing. This is actually the center-based program conducted in an, an, uh, in, um, an alternative venue. This is, it could be blended, it could be hybrid because uh, the barangay uh, has, the connectivity is a problem. As such, the teachers are coming up with modules and they're also doing that and the parents are coming to pick them up. And I, I would like to thank also the barangay who have been helping distributing the modules that are being done or the learning ship that are being provided by the child developing workers and teachers. Then we also take up one ladder 
of the ECCD service provider, the focal persons, because at this point, uh, most of the local social welfare development officers are engaged in PORPIS, in AYUDA, and other things and that, that they are attending to. And so the focal persons become very helpful in assisting also the child development workers and teachers. We also have actually conducted several uh, uh, webinars to provide technical assistance to ECCD service providers. So we never forget the city and social municipal uh, work, social welfare development officers so that they continue to implement what we are trying to implement during this time and ensure that the quality ECCD programs for project learning center is in tandem or connected to what we are doing. So we also ask them to register with the local government as uh, stipulated in the law. And so now we have a registration of local government, I mean rather of private learning centers because the registration, their permit, not only business permit, but permit to operate depends on also in the issuance of the local government um, unit. Then for quality assurance, we have a data banking system that uh, the NCD, the NETIS, that is the enrollment tracking and information system, a web-based information system used by the SCCB Council and its partner to monitor and track the operation of the center, including its services. And it contains database of all ECCD data like that, not only the enrollment, but the enrollment per age bracket, the enrollment of children in the diverse, who are considered diverse learner, including children with special needs, IPs, and something like that. And then we have the National ECCD MNE Accountability System, which is actually this cap, this is part of the strategic plan, which I will talk later, and serve as a monitoring and evaluation component. This is a web-based online information system that store, manage, and process ECCD data from existing information system of ECCD council member agency. As such, the local government is not saddled with so many uh, uh, evaluation tools for the, for the capturing of our data. I am very proud to present to you the early years first, the National Strategic Plan. So we have already uh, conducted this in 2019, and this is, I mean, rather 2018. So we now have the 2019 to 2030 plan. What makes this uh, unique? It builds an existing plan. So we did not reinvent the wheel, but it is building on blocks. It sharpened focus on young children and enhanced a multi sectoral programming on equity and quality and access. And it is compliant with the Early Years Act, the kindergarten law, and the first 1,000 days law, the, um, which is uh, actually part of our program. And then we the triple purpose of this um, national strategic plan is it address the gaps in current initiative. Of course, we cannot say that everything is beautiful. We have gaps. And it also strengthens links and coordination among an existing efforts. And we try to improve existing efforts. As such, what we did is so we plug, or rather we step, we have also our, our goals at the, at the slide there, uh, that all young children from conception to early, to school entry, in, entry age, achieve their full developmental potential in nurturing homes, supportive communities with integrated, comprehensive, and equitable quality services. We're envisioning that every young child is healthy, protected, and developing and learning, that parents and guardians, primary caregivers, and communities are confident and able to provide safe, supportive, and nurturing and responsible caregiving and the national and local duty bearers deliver on their mandates to provide integrated, comprehensive, equitable quality services because all children are rights bearer. In fact, the World Health Organization is focusing on the nurturing care framework and the Philippines is participating in the survey of the programs. Our, our uh, strategic plan also covers 
the agency responsibility. From the screen, you will see that the DOH and the NNC is in charge of the health and other concern uh, affecting health. And then the DSWD is in charge of child protection against violence, abuses, severe ne uh, neglect and emergencies and other child protection program. The Department of Education naturally is in charge of education from kindergarten programs and to the rest of the K-12. However, um, the ECT Council Secretariat have the primary responsibility for psychosocial stimulation and early learning intervention and components of all sub outcomes that require intersectoral coordination and institutional sub outcomes of the plan. Yes. The way forward, we're saying right now, right here, that um, our program are, are all this, but we would like from for 2030 up to 2030 from now, we would like to expand access, equity to quality ECD programs and services. It's why I would like to thank also the mayors who are partnering with us uh, because actually we, were, we have very beautiful partnership with the mayors in providing ECCD quality, quality ECCD service. And then we would like also to continuously roll out standards and guidelines and establishing of the quality assurance system by way of our monitoring and evaluation. This one at the middle is the institutionalizing program for human resource development. This is the most uh, uh, challenges of all the concerns because right now, right here we speak, there are no, except for some, which I can, I will not like, of course, uh, uh, Montilupa is one of those, and Kaintai is also one of those that have plantilla for, uh, uh, for, for child development workers and teachers. Actually, some of them are on job order, and some of them are contractual, and not all of them have tenures. And uh, in fact, one of the um, child development union in Bohol is asking me what happens to the Magna Carta. I think we have to ask also the same to that. And then we are also trying to be proactive in legislative work for the improvement of policy and mechanism. And we would like to strengthen further collaboration and cooperation with LGUs and NGUs. Again, before I close, I would like to encourage and, uh, and motivate and uh, urge the national and the local government to invest in ECCD because that is the missing link of the, our education. If we uh, provide children who are already ready for the K, then there will be more uh, learning and we will not be suffering from push out, from dropout, and from illnesses and other sicknesses. So thank you very much. And with that, I would like to thank also the Rex Foundation and all of you who are here. Bless you. Maraming salamat, Dr. Inchong. Thank you so much for a comprehensive presentation about the early childhood care and development in the Philippines. As some of you might know, early childhood care and development is a topic very close to my heart. Yung nabanggit po kanina ni Dr. Inchong about the kainta na nagkaroon ng plantilla position yung mga daycare workers doon. Uh, I was one of the person who really pushed for that. Kasi sabi ko, hindi pwede na hindi mapapangalagaan yung mga teachers. You know, when we take care of the children, we also take care of the, of the teachers. And I have always believed that the foundation of a well-built society and nation is dependent on every child and the care and development that has been afforded them. Ngayon naman, dumako tayo sa Q&A portion ng ating programa. Kanina pa, habang nagsasalita si Dr. Inshong, meron na tayo nakikitang dalawang questions from ating uh, mga participants. So, uh, yung iba sa atin, if you would like to uh, type in your questions now para mabasa natin at uh, matanong natin, ma-address natin ang questions natin kay Dr. Inshong. The floor is now open. Uh, and if you are watching on Zoom, please uh, click on the Q&A button found at the bottom of your screen and type your questions. And if you are on Facebook, just write the questions on the comment section. Now, kung kayo naman ay naka-friendster, 
sigurado ako magiging mga malapit na kayo maging millennial or kaedad niyo ako. Kasi wala na pong friends tour ngayon. But anyway, let's start with the first. Dr. Inshong, may friends tour po ba kayo before? <laughs> 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 Talagang years and years and years ago ang Friendster. Okay. Let us start with the first question. Unahin po natin yung sa... I'm assuming this is from the municipality of Santo Nino, uh, MSWD, uh, South Cotabato. Ito very... Uh, maganda ito eh. May, pwede ba daw, Dr. Inshong, na yung honorarium ay i-charge sa... Ang honorarium ng daycare workers i-charge sa SEF. Nasa local government yan. We cannot dictate to the local government. That's their call. Although may guidelines talaga doon na pwedeng gamitin ang SEF at saka yung God Fund, but eh, hindi po tayo nagbibigay ng mandato sa sa local government na um, gamitin nila yun. May, may guidelines naman po doon sa memorandum circular and they, are, they, can, they can use that. So in short, hindi pwedeng gamitin uh, I, It depends Ma on their local government. On the local government unit. So kung malakas sila kay mayor, pwede, at sa mga konsehal, pwede siguro nilang ilagay somewhere there. Sa no? council. Sa, siyang, no? Actually, sa council. Sa council. Oh. Yes, at sa saka council. yung SEF kasi, ang, ang school board, ang chair yata dyan, ang mayor at saka yung district, ay uh, superintendent. So, on DepEd, yes. Yeah. So there yes, should be some representation because we know that, I, I agree with you, Miss Pia, that we have to take her off the, to the workers. Yun, kaya paulit-ulit po sinasabi na ang isa sa greatest challenges really namin ay itong kung paano mabibigyan ng tamang posisyon itong mga tao. Kasi kung, kung inaalaga natin mga bata, eh bakit dapat kailagaan natin yung nag-aalaga sa kanila? I agree 100%. Kailangan alagaan ang teachers. Anyway, uh, sana nasagot natin ng maganda ang uh, ating uh, ang question about the honorarium. But we have another question. I will uh, read it. May IRR po ba daw sa creation ng CDT? I'm assuming the CDT is the Child Development Teacher? IRR? Implementing rules and regulations. Yes, this is this is a question from Luwilin Mabilangan, uh, municipality of uh, Jabong Samar. Sabi niya, meron po bang IRR? I think they're talking about the qualification. For IRR for the creation of this. Oh, CDG. I'm sorry, CDG. What is CDG? Uh, they did not. She did not define it. Child development. Uh, let us ask, no, uh, Ms. Luilin, naririnig nyo naman kami. So please type in kung ano yung CDG so that we will have a uh, better comprehension on the question. So, at bago yan, ah, CDT. So, tama nga, CDT nga po talagang sinabi. CDT so this is the child development, development teacher. The child development teachers actually are those who are holder of our Four degree, four-year degree course on uh, education, and that's why we are. That's why we are granting for those who are who are not yet. We are granting them a scholarship in our child development workers, but we can only accommodate uh, a, a certain number. However, we are we part of the local government uh, unit um, mandate is to support the child development workers. There is a very good, if I may, if I have done, there's a very good practice in uh, where, that, Mate, um, uh, where, where the former Congresswoman um, Almario, Thelma Almario, has enrolled through her, uh, through her funds, uh, enrolled child development workers in that area to uh, graduate I mean, to state university by making arrangements that they pay a minimal amount. And gradually, they're able to complete to complete their their bachelor's degree. Right now, we are also talking with Tesla to come up with NCDC. It's a ladderized kind of form. We will inform you later. But even if they are already for your degree course, as Ms. Pia has said earlier, not all of the, sad to say, not all of the local government. So it, it involves 50,000 plus child development teachers and workers 
and I can name all those that I know that are providing, like uh, Mayor Presnedi, um, San Jose, San Jose Antique, very small town, but all of their of their child development workers are already put Lampinia position, and um, and gradually, gradual lang yun naman nila, then kaintanga, and then uh, what else? I think Mabalakat also is saying that they have a separate unit. So, and I cannot play. I mean, ab baka makalimutan ko yung iba, pasensya na po. Uh, ano, tao lang po ako. So we will post that. We will make a survey and post it in our um, our Facebook page. Yes, napakaganda po niyang uh, inyong naiisip, Dr. Inshong, that uh, yung mga munisipyo and the cities na merong plantilya possession ng kanilang daycare uh, workers, kung mapopost natin para yeah. mas maiengganyo yung ating uh, other municipalities to uh, follow suit. Na. Kasi pinopost uh, din namin na Ms. Pia yung mga uh, recognized na school. Kasi meron kaming recognition and accreditation, so we post them. And those schools with, uh, who are already recognized level one, two, or three, where we are enrolling them in, there is an upcoming international conference. And so the ECCD plus Rex has uh, supported 50 of them. And then the ECCD will also contribute another 100. So we are sending 100 uh, child developing teachers and workers whose, uh, whose uh, child developing centers are recognized in the new tools that we are having. So, maganda wow. yun. Wow, wow. Galing. Congratulations. Anyway, we have another question from Sylvia Altura, uh, LYT Incorporated Preschool Teachers League PASIG chapter. Uh, uh, is CS CSO accredited? How can LYT, parang light yata to, light incorporated light. national NGO be accredited? Gusto siguro magpa-accredit po sa ECCD ang uh, etong passing chapter. Actually, uh, before before the the um, earlier act, uh, the the permit and the recognition of the private learning centers is in the, under the Department of Education. But when this is passed 2013, we created. I mean, the the board has created an. Um, um, guidelines for granting permit and recognition and accreditation. As such, it's the local government now uh, giving that, that kind of services. So the social welfare development officer has the guidelines in which they can go. If, if you, you can send to Rex perhaps your address and then we will get back to you because they will send us the address. We will, okay. we will inform you. Or you can see on our Web page at the address so we can personally uh, and address your concern. Those okay. that are accredited or recognized, accredited, those that are recognized by the Department of Education, we revalidate that and see for ourselves, and then so we issue another recognition. Okay. So, narinig mo, Ms. Sylvia Altura, so either you, uh, marami kayong options to go to the LGU, MSWD, or write directly ECCD, or uh, write to Rex Education, and then meron naman tayong collaboration, mas mabilis ang ating communication, at yung pagtanggap ninyo ng inyong sagot. Uh, we have another, ang daming tanong pala, no, Dr. Inchong, meron tayong uh, isang tanong from Anne Bernardo, I'm sorry, Lu Luisa Manzanero. As have mentioned earlier, po, ECCD is a foundation for kindergarten since a lot of children during pandemic has not enrolled last year and now they are five years old. They have asked if they can still enroll in the daycare. So may tanong po pala, kung pwede pa mag-enroll sa daycare yung five years old na? Actually, five years old belongs already to the Department of Education. Oh. Kindergarten na yung batang yan according to the age bracket. Kasi um, kahit naman may pandemic, mayroon pa rin tayo ng learning continuity plan. Yung nga sinasabi ko na center-based, the National Early Learning Curriculum is translated into learning packages by the teachers. And dito nga uh, talagang na, na, sa isa sa nakikita kung maganda ang ginawa yung Batangas City. Kasi 
one one month silang nag nag uh, gumawa ng mga materials pagkatapos tinuloy-tuloy nila in fact na, yes. na, na, na ano kami na, na we were saddened with one of the teachers of Laurel child development teacher line of duty na bangga yung kanyang ano dahil nagbigay siya ng I think nag ano siya eh, nagbigay siya ng module size sa malayong bayan tapos na ano siya and we were so saddened by that that's that's in line of duty siya na see how committed these people are and so they needed really protection yes. frontliner din sila eh kasi nag-aano sila mm-hmm. ng mga magulang nagmimit sila gumagawa sila ng modules para yung mga teachers din sa Department of Education kasi teacher talaga sila So they are preparing yeah. the materials, translating the curriculum into modules, uh, talking to the parents kung paano gagawin. Pero matutuwa ka sa mga sa mga um, experience sa mga magulang nung isang may conference, niyaya ko. Tuwan-tuwa ang mga magulang na sila ang teacher ng mga bata. Kasi yes. pinakakanta daw siya ng anak niya. Mm-hmm. Nako gusto ko sana mag-follow up question Dr. Insong doon sa ano nasawi na teacher pero siguro unahin ko na lang yung kung merong pay anyway kung may assistance anyway unahin ko na lang po ang questions uh, na uh, uh, na pasok ni Jeppy Bong Hanoi sabi niya what are the possible plantilla items for daycare teachers sa LGU ko ito, but what are the possible uh, plantilla items for them? Actually, sa DBM, dalawa lang ang plantilla na nakita namin. Daycare workers, one and two yata, which is very, very minimal. Pero kung um, grade 8 or grade grade 6 and 8, ma- malaki na rin. Kaya nga, nung una kami nakikipag-usap sa mga local government, sabi namin, kahit sana mga 10,000. Pero, yes. doon sa nakita, hmm. saan kami nagpunta ni ano? The, the NEDA, The NEDA and the UNDP conducted a survey and they went to, I think, si Merle Garcia as the Provincial Social Welfare Development Officer. Ang usay ng Provincial Social Officer na yun, kinakausap niya lahat ng local government na hindi nagbibigay ng, ano, ng, ng tamang honorarium at saka naingan yun naman. Siguro, kunting ano lang, kunting lambing lang sa mayor. Kasi mayor ngayon, saddled with so many things like bibili sila ng ganito, mag-aayuda sila. Pero natutuwa ako at kahit sa panahon ito, ginawa ng Rex itong webinar which is very important and I really appreciate this. Ikalawa, nakikita natin na interesado sila at saka na, nalalaman nila na patuloy pa rin nagbibigay ng services yung mga child development workers and teachers despite of that, despite of all the hardship. Kaya nga may survey kami 2009, we asked them, If you have your life, if you live your life all over again, would you still be considered, would you still consider being a child development workers and teachers? Ang sagot 98% yes. Yes. Wala na silang sahod na, ma, na ano maayos. Yes pa din siya. See that compassion and that passion yes. for helping? Maiiyak ka talaga. Yes, yes. Kaya saludo po talaga ako sa mga daycare teachers. Not only the daycare teachers, but mga teachers talaga in general. We, we call them yeah. teachers. Yes. Anyway, we have another question, ma'am. Uh, this is from Amil Alberto Azul. Sabi niya, what are the qualifications in applying for child development teacher for the National Child Development Teacher? I think she's talking. He's she by or he. He's talking about. They are talking about. She. Qualifications. Yeah, yes. Qualifications. So now, child development teacher. Baka mag apply sa national child development teacher. The, the mayor is the one selecting that, and we gave the mayor our preferred qualification. The dapat na ano na siya four year degree course holder in education okay. at least preferably ideally. Parang FLCD, Early Childhood Educator. Pero okay. kung kinuha sila ng mayor, at sila man, kasi ang pinipili ng mayor yung nandun doon na sa kanyang mga constituent na nag-serve nag, na naman tagal, good performance. Yes. Kasi marami naman teachers sa kanila talaga eh. <coughs> ang problema lang natin ngayon, ang compensation. So, yes. mat- in order for a teacher to be called a teacher, is actually a degree holder of education. Pero, mm-hmm. um, Inano yan ni Senator Angara, the, the uh, primary author of the law, the sinabi niya, hindi dapat manatiling daycare workers kasi daw, 
teachers talaga siya. So, child development work. Yes. Ako naman, para yes. safer, early childhood educators ang ginagamit ko madalas. Para okay. hindi ko na lang dinidivide yung teacher and workers. Yes, yes. So, siguro dapat palitan natin, hindi na daycare workers. Dapat uh, child development teachers. Uh, tama po ba yan? Yun po bang sinabi niya kanya? Actually, yes. sa, batas, sa batas yung nakalagay. Child, child development teachers. Okay. okay. Yes. And we have another question uh, from Blanchelin Duldulao. Sabi niya, can you enlighten us on how to request the LGU to include the daycare center in the SEF? So, nako ma'am, nakikita po talaga natin. The problem here is really the pay ng Correct. ating uh, child development. Yung yes. Actually, it, it depends upon the LGU. Ang inyong supervisor ay ang inyong child or local local social welfare development officer. So, you, you have meetings every month. So, siguro pag-usapan ninyo doon kung paano ninyo kakausapin ang sangguni ang sangguni ang panlangso o pambayan or para maisama kayo doon ang concern ninyo, maitable na agenda ng school board. Kasi sa school board yung SCF, di ba? Oh. At saka kung paano, kasi nasa sangguni lang yan, Ms. Pia, you have been a uh, Yes. Hello, government official. You know that they can do something about it if they really put their hearts into it. Hindi ko pinatawaran ng kakayahan ng mga mayor. Pero their hearts are really for kids. Kasi ito yes. mga batang nasa early child ngayon, these are the next generation. Take care of them and the next generation will be a better generation than where we are now. Yes, yes, ma'am. Tama, tama. So, ano, uh, please coordinate also with your council, uh, municipal council, para matulungan po kayo sa inyong concerns sa uh, uh, pag-allocate ng money from the SEF. And we have another question. Uh, it's from an anonymous attendee, ma'am. Sabi niya, good day, Doctora Inshong. May we ask if this legal, if this legal basis, uh, the early years act are the one we have to represent as a legal basis that we have to represent during yeah. the accreditation. Oh, okay, so yun lang, yun lang. That is, is the act, uh, the, the one that they have to uh, present so that they can have an accreditation for the CDC or the NCTC. So yun po ba ang legal basis? Now, ng kanilang, ano, ng kanilang recognition? Accreditation, yes. Accreditation or the recognition, yes. The, the, rec the accreditation is the highest form. You can you will start with registration and then recognition one, two, and then you go to accreditation. But these are a quality assurance. Yes. And, but if they're talking about the registration, magre-register muna po sila sa Social Welfare Development Office. Ang, usa, ang, ang guidelines kasi sinasabi na Bago kumuha ng business permit, if they're private, then they will have to go to the Social Welfare Development Officer para makita kung tama ba yun. Is it safe building? It is, do they have the program? Are the people taking care of their kids are properly or qualified educationally? And then ito ba eh, hindi lang ano? Kasi, kasi business ang ginagawa ng ano, di ba? Yes, yes, ma'am. So hindi, hindi naman ibig sabihin well, that the legal basis is business. the... Hindi ibig sabihin that the legal basis should be the Early Years Act, but marami pa pong iba, no? That's a legal basis, but there are requirements. Yun ang po ang sinasabi yes, ni Dr. there Isho. are requirements. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, so yun pong mga requirements na yun, matutulungan po kayo kung kayo po ay dadalaw sa MSWD office ninyo. Kasi meron na pong nabigay sa kanilang ECCD ng list of requirements. So, uh, pag na-comply niyo po yun, then the ball will start rolling from there. Tama po ba, ma'am? Yes. Yes. And we have another question from uh, Sherry Lou Borhal. How, how does the private preschools can reach out with the ECCD for seminars and other devices? And how can we develop or enhance our learning programs which are aligned to ECCD standards? So private schools po ito. Private yeah. preschools, they'd like to reach out to you and get in touch with you and have an uh, alignment of their program uh, as what the ECCD would uh, want them to have. Please go to our webpage in, the, in our portals and you will see all the materials there. 
In fact, kasi these are, these are public documents. Our curriculum is downloaded there. The ECCD checklist is there. Even Portage Guide to Early Education is there. And then if you want, really, then you can, you can, you can email us. Our email is, is still in the in the website, and then you can you can join us. We we answer every no no one is left behind. If you just write us, then we will answer. We have the help desk who can help you. Oh, thank you for that. Oh, we have another question from uh, Professor June Arangues Arangues. He say PhD. Sabi niya po. Do CDTs have the same plantilla items with deaf ed teachers? Nasagot niya na po ito kanina, no? Just, but anyway, just for enlightenment, baka meron po tayong madagdag na uh, kasagutan lang po dito. But actually, I think you mentioned this already a while ago. Actually, talagang walang, walang plantilla ang local government. Sometimes the, the, the mayor is so forward-looking and visionary and then they get some plantilla position sa sa kanilang position sa sa ano kasi nag-iisa lang naman yang ginag maghahandle ng ng ano ng National Child Development Center but they do not the request the answer is no they do not have the same um salary grade as the ones that are kasi local government ito pag binigyan mo sila ng grade teacher 1 which is almost 23,000 magagalit yung ibang maaano natin magagalit yung social welfare development officer. Bakit ganun ko ta siya eh, ako ganito. Yes. It depends upon the capacity. Like, di ba, yes. Pia, they have classes? Na, yes. Yung classes ng mga ano, may um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So definitely, yes. it varies from from municipality to cities, etc. Correct, correct. I agree po, ma'am. Kasi uh, I remember, no, sa Kainta, if I'm not mistaken, ang pinasa namin as uh, SG6 yata or 8, salary grade level 6 or 8 for the uh, preschool, for the daycare workers. Pero ito ay eh, nilagay namin sa MSWD na plantilla. So okay. the council created uh, kung ilan sila na daycare workers no, nag-create kami ng ganon and then we gave them SG6 or SG8. Pero uh, ayan. So malinaw na po na nasagot din. Hindi siya pareho. Hindi po siya pareho sa uh, deaf ed na plantilla. Yeah. That's why they were saying earlier that uh, we we have trained for, for, for almost 1,000 child development teachers na nabigyan natin ng 18 units over and above their baccalaureate. Ang nangyayari pag ganun, 18 units na tapos nagturo na siya ng ano, mataas na rank niya pag lumipat siya sa ano. While I'm saying na this is not a government loss in investment, but it is a loss in investment of the local government. Kasi habang nagtitrain siya, pinasasahod siya ng local government. Di ba? Tapos lipat siya yes. na sa. Although ang ECCD yes. natin, 0 mm -hmm. to 8, which means kindergarten 1 to 3. But then again, na-deprive naman yung ano mo, na baka, baka yung mga bata mo doon magagaling ang susunod na presidente, o di ba? So, iniwanan mo, di, uh -huh. hindi ko naman ikaw masisisi kasi mataas na naman talaga ang sound ng depend. Yes, yes ma'am. And um, marami-rami ito. We have another question from June Pearl Alonso. Sabi niya na banggit ni Dr. Inshong ang link ng ACCD at DepEd. Bakit po pag nag-apply uh, nag sa DepEd, hindi credited ang CW, CDW experience? I beg to disagree. Kasi pagka sila nagkaroon na ng ano, nagkaroon na ng training, it, it, marami akong, that, that's, this is a, well, this is a news to me because alam ko yung mga umalis sa early childhood, ano, sa National Child Development Center na binigyan na namin ng, ng scholarship, madalas na kukuha sila. At saka, ang daming kailangan ng Department of Education. In fact, hindi ko lang sasabihin kung ilan ang plantilla na unfilled position for teachers. So because Para I've been there, ko. yeah, I've been there, Miss Pia. I've been an assistant yes. secretary when I, oh, I, le yeah. I left. So I know that ano, it depends upon your principal ba or child I, or, or, ano, or uh, tawag doon, superintendent. Kasi yes. it, 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 did, it did not say that those who had been in, in trainings, ano, depending kung ikaw ay galing sa child development center na 
hindi ko alam. I'm, I cannot venture an ad- answer without ruffling, ruffling feathers of the, the Department yes. of Education personnel. And yes. I'm there. And I don't want to be disloyal to my my <laughs> my department before. Correct, correct. Marami. Balita ko, marami talagang vacancies sa DepEd. Eh, baka pwede naman mag-share na lang sa si DepEd ng konting plantilla sa ating mga daycare teachers. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, it's just an idea, no? Anyway, we have, again, another uh, question uh, from an anonymous sender. Meron po bang black and white para sa daycare workers, centers, ay matawag na child development worker or center. So meron po bang, siguro meron bang black and white uh, guidelines para ang daycare workers or ang daycare center ay matawag na child development worker or child development center. Parang ganun yata. Actually, in the law, it says that the service provider shall henceforth be called child development teacher and worker. I think uh, it's in the policy. It's part of the law and it says that effective immediately the child development worker shall either daycare worker shall be called all service providers are either depending on whether they are uh, undergraduate or graduate. Yeah. So they, they shall call child development workers and child development teachers. Nasa batas po yun. Okay, so nasa I, I, nasa iya po yan, 2013. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so uh, Mr. Anonymous, nasa early years act po yan. You can uh, check it out there. Another question from Rose Manahan. Just to clar- just to clarify, ang gate pass ng bata na galing sa CDC ay ECCD checklist or is it not LRN? It is um, um, when we when um, Dr. Lorna Dino is the assistant. I mean the under secretary for programs. She used to sit at the board, vice um, in in lieu of the of secretary Briones, and he has issued an advisory requesting all the the daycare well the, the schools to ask for hindi siya requirement, but it is better that the child brings with him or her, the ECCD checklist, kasi meron siya ng ano, ah, so LRM na sinasabi is yung ano, sa private school yan, meron silang LRM na tinatawag. Mm-hmm. Meron siya, mga number yata ng school. Pero sa, sa, sa public child development center, walang ganon. Hindi sila kasama. Pero ang hinihingi lang ng Department of Education is malaman lang ang profile ng bata kung siya ba on track, advanced, or delayed. Para may, may basihan na ang, ang kindergarten teacher kung saan, saan, saan magsisimula yung bata. Okay. So, uh, so sobrang daming questions, ma'am. Isang mm-hmm. question na lang po ang uh, sasabihin natin sa inyo para masagot nyo. But the rest of the questions, we will email it to you para masagot nyo po sila uh, via email. With, no? with their email, of course. Yes. yes. Uh, ito sabi ng isang uh, sender, is an anonymous sender, sabi niya, is it possible for a church organization to partner with the ECCD Council? Yeah, we encourage partnership. In fact, I have class kanina yung mga NGOs na inano namin. Uh, so may mga, kasi uh, tanggapin na natin sa mga bulubundukin like sa Baguio, ang dami-dami mga uh, church-based na organization, di ba? And then uh-huh. they, they taught very good, very good English. In fact, when I was still in the Department of Education, the one, the first essay that we did with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with one of the, I think, Ayala Foundation, ang nanalo isang batang igrop. So, kasi nga, tinuturuan siya ng mga, ano, ng mga charge-based organization. Okay, so pwedeng pwede. So ayan, Mr. Anonymous, pwedeng pwede yung inyong tanong na pwedeng may collaboration with a church-based organization. Anyway, hindi na po natin masagot, matanong lahat, ma'am, ng question. Sobrang dami ang the thing. Very exciting ang ating uh, presentation. Pwede <laughs> naghulad din ako kasi they are very free to ask questions and yes. we welcome that. We welcome, we welcome your, ano, kaya nga ito, ano eh. Yes, yes. Yes, Thank and, you for all your and, 
Yes, and siguro for the next episode, siguro nandiyan sila at maghahanda din sila ng mas marami pang tanong. At uh, if you will be with us again on this uh, second episode, eh, mas marami silang time na kausapin po kayo. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Enchong, for uh, the lovely presentation and for answering all the questions of our uh, uh, viewers no, and our attendees. So, uh, Dr. Enchong, in her presentation, talked about the importance of ECCD, the foundational principles, and the laws and policies governing the ECCD system. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, marami po siyang nabanggit dito. No? Uh, sabi niya, uh, hinighlight niya dito yung ECCD system components. Ano po itong mga to? Sabi niya, there's the curriculum, the management, the human resource development, and the parent education and involvement. Now, the ECCD curriculum is standard and implemented in all child development centers in all local government units. However, some LGUs are known to implement innovations and considered to be one of the best practices in three ECCD system components. So ngayon naman, for our appreciation and learning, we have invited three exemplary LGUs to share their best practices along these components. For parent education and involvement, involvement, we have the Mabalakat City. Uh, this is headed by the Honorable Mayor Crisostomo Garbo. And with him is the city ECCD officer, Mr. Charlo Costales. Mapapanood po natin ang video niya uh, in a while. No? And then second for the municipality of San Antonio in the province of Quezon, they will be highlighting their human resource development. Uh, they, this will be headed by the Honorable Mayor of San Antonio Quezon, Mayor Eric Wagan, and its MSWDO officer, Ms. Arlene A. Bagon. And the last one, third, the municipality of the city of Muntinlupa. They will share their programs on ECCD management. And it's still headed by its Honorable Mayor, Jaime De La Rosa Presnedi, and the Division Head of ECED, Ms. Jenny Deuda Mercado. Panaorin po natin ang kanilang video. Palang araw po sa ating lahat. I am Carlo Costales, the City Early Childhood Care and Development Officer of Mabalakat City. Malaki ang impact ng pagkakaroon ng isang mabuti, uh, holistic foundation uh, na naka-achieve ng isang bata sa, panahon, sa panahon ng tinatawag na early childhood. Maraming nagsasabi na ang impact ng pagkakaroon ng isang mabuti, komprehensibo at multi-stakeholder na ECCD program ay may epekto sa physical, moral, psychosocial well-being ng isang bata. In short, paano tayo magkakaroon ng mga tinatawag na bright child? Napaka-importante na maging matibay ang kanilang pundasyon. At saan makukuha ang pundasyon na iyon? Sa iba't ibang programa at serbisyo na ibinibigay ng early childhood care development na meron ng isang lokalidad o isang pamahalaan. Dito sa lungsod ng Mabalakat City, Ang Early Childhood Care and Development dati ay nasa ilalim ng programa ng aming, o ng opisina ng City Social Welfare and Development Office. Pero nang makita ng current administration natin uh, sa pangunguna ng ating mayor, si Honorable Mayor Crisostomo Garbo, nakita niya na kung gaano ba ka-important yung um, at ating Early Childhood Care and Development. That maraming mga iba't-ibang mga elemento, iba't-ibang sistema at iba't-ibang stakeholders na nakapaloob o kasama rito. At dahil doon, uh, minabuti na magkaroon ng isang dedicated na opisina para lamang sa early childhood care and development dito sa ating lungsod. At dahil dyan, uh, sa tulong na rin ng ating sangguningang panlungsod, inilabas yung tinatawag nating City Ordinance Number no. 15, Series of 2020. That actually institutionalized the early childhood care and development program and system here in Mabalakat City. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya, medyo naging challenging ang ang ECCD. So paano ba natin ini-implement yung ating ano um, early childhood care development program nitong panahong ito ng pandemya? 
Sa Mabalakad City po, we're currently undertaking yung tinatawag natin CBPAP, yung Community Based Program Implementation Using Alternative Venues. So, paano paraan ito? We, we are doing the three-prong approach. Siyempre, yung, yung uh, upgrading, enhancement ng skills and competence ng ating mga parents. Sila kasi yung, uh, ano ngayon, sila naman ang bida ngayon. Adjustment ng role ng ating child development workers, dati sila yung direct contact ng bata. Ngayon, nagpo-provide sila ng technical assistance ngayon sa mga bagulang who have the direct contact na ngayon doon sa kanilang uh, mga anak. Siyempre, hindi nawawala yung monitoring side ng program which is being undertaken by our uh, uh, our ano, ECCB personnel. At yung ikatlo, yung pagkakaroon natin ng supplementary ano supplementary materials like yung pagtatayo o pagkakaroon natin ng ECCB commons uh, this is very important here in Mabalakat uh, yung commons na yon siya yung tumutulong sa mga magulang at nagsusupplement ng mga materials na, ma na gagamitin ng mga magulang habang itinatawid nila yung mga learning plans na meron tayo so how do we go about it? Uh, para ma-implement natin yung CBPAV uh, dito sa ating syudad meron tayong isang linggong schedule at bawat linggong schedule na ito nakapaloob ito sa isang tinatawag nating weekly learning plan o yung, uh, ito yung curriculum guide na binibigay sa mga parents every Mondays and Tuesdays magkakaroon na ng batch para syempre sa, sa protection din naman ng mga magulang at service provider lahat ng mga child development centers natin dito sa Mabalakat City parang naging learning center sila ng mga magulang Uh, batch by batch, hour by hour, pumupunta yung mga parents, uh, usually five parents kada batch sa isang uh, sa kanilang center. Doon, ang trabaho ng ni child development workers, ituro sa kanila papaano ba gagawin itong weekly learning plan natin sa linggong ito para alam nilang i-translate yun sa kanilang mga anak. Yung mga natuturuan ngayon ng mga parents, uh, they are asked to subscribe doon naman sa approach natin ng ACCD Commons. So makikita nila doon sa aming FB page yung iba itong mga AVP, audio video presentations, na pwede nilang gamitin material aside pa doon sa itinuro sa kanila ng mga magulang. So ano ngayon ang gagawin ni Child Development Worker mula Wednesday hanggang Friday? Friday? All she has to do is to go about monitoring the parents in alternative venues. Pwede itong sa ilalim ng mangga, pwede ito sa isang napagkasunduang lugar. Inaalam kung papaano na ba ini-implement ng mga magulang itong um, ating weekly learning plan. Gayun din, nagkakaroon din ng spot checking. Syempre, in a, in a very safe distance, um, nagkakaroon ng pakikipag-ugnayan dun sa bata. Syempre, dapat nasa open area at meron dapat na distansya para lang malaman Uh, kumusta na ba yung implementation nitong, nitong programa o nitong weekly learning plans? And then by Friday, ang ating mga uh, child development workers pupunta sa ating opisina, magsasubmit ng kanilang report at ang kapalit nun, yung susunod naman na learning plan para sa susunod na linggo. So ganun tumatakbo yung ating ano, mga programa. This is also supplemented by um, ECCD activities that we go about at what that we do about para isupplement naman yung tulong na o yung mga binibigay na learning plan sa mga magulang. Halimbawa, mga special activities like Nutrition Month Celebration, Family Day, and the, and the likes, pati yung uh, tinatawag namin Children's Congress. These are being creatively done right now. Uh, blended ang approach. Merong magkikita-kita yung ilang mga parents leader. Meron din namang ginagawa siya through video at ipinapakita sa mga, ano natin, sa mga parents natin. All of this is to ensure na hindi tumigil ang ECCD service dito sa Mabalakat City. Ang battle cry namin is, ECCD must not stop. Palagi nire-remind tayo ng ating city government through, our, through the leadership of our mayor na importante para sa kanya yung continued education ng mga bata. Maraming salamat po. Kapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat, isa sa mga mahalagang ginagampanan ng ECCD sa kabila ng pandemya ay ang paggabay sa ating mga kabataan. Maliban sa ating mga healthcare frontliners, itinuturing ko rin ang mga dedicated ECCD staff na kabilang sa mga bagong bayani ng ating panahon. Mabuhay kayong lahat and may God bless us all. Magandang buhay po sa inyo lahat. Oo, ang puno ng bayan ng Panginoon San Antonio, uh, Mayor Eric M. Wagan. Alam niyo ho, nagsimula po ako ng 2013. Nagsimula po noon, 
ang ating pong uh, flagship uh, program ay ang children's welfare. Kung saan ay uh, kung paano sa simula pa lamang ng uh, panganganak ng ating mga sanggol, ay uh, kung paano na po namin ito may ingatan at mahalagaan. The development program, yung protection ho ng ating mga kapataan, ng ating mga bata, and how to survive sa ho ang bayan ng San Antonio. Sa unang um, nabiyayaan ng proyekto ng isang gusali, at nung ito po ay mabalita ng inyong lingkod, kagyan po akong nakipag-ugnayan sa ating punditbutihing direktor, kasama na ho ang paglalaan ng uh, Uh, lupa ng aming pamilya na pagtitirikan po nito. At doon nga ho ay uh, mahaba na po ang uh, tinakbo ng programa ng ECCD po sa pamamagitan ng ating pong mga uh, child development worker. Ma maganda rin po kasi yung uh, ownership at co-ownership na nangyayari po sa amin ng ating pong mga social welfare officer sapagkat hindi naman po namin ito may sasakatuparan kung uh, wala po yung partnership na nangyayari. Alam niya po nung ako yung nag-aaral pa, nung ako yung bata pa, wala po mga ganitong programa. Kaya, uh, napakahira pag po nang gunto mo sa paaralan, uh, iba ang adjustment. So, pero sa dahil meron tayong early child care development, hindi nangitirapan ang mga formal school na mag-adapt, mag-tanggap yung mga bata sapagkat sila meron ng mga specific trainings at sila ay na malaki ang may tutulong ng mga bata na sumagilalim sa programa ng ECCD para pagpasok nila ng formal sa school ay hindi na sila um, nahihirapang mag-adjust lalo na sa social na uh, yung mga social and emotional needs. At ito yung nakita ko mahalaga-mahalaga ang konsepto kung bakit sa ECCD. Isa sa tagumpay ng uh, programa ng ECCD dito sa aming bayan ay ang uh, napakagandang napakalaking contribution ang aming mga child development workers. Kung kaya't ang pamahalapayan sa pangunan ni Mayor Eric Wagan at sa advokasiya ng inyong lingkod ay maraming mga programang may matupad para sa kanilang kapakanan. Una na dito ay ang paglalaan ng fondo para sa kanilang mga training. Ito ay taon-taon uh, uh, regular ng training at sinisiguro na ang kanilang kaalaman ay magagamit nila sa mga programa para sa daycare. Isa dito yung um, patuloy na pagpapaulad ng kanilang sarili o yung personality development, training on uh, capacity enhancement program para sa kanila, uh, disaster preparedness, first aid, lalo tigit na yung panahon ng pandemya, sinigurado ng pamahalaan at lahat sila ay fully vaccinated para sa pagpapatupad ng programa. Ang kagandahan dito, dahil nakikita sila na talagang uh, ang dedikasyon ay hindi matatawaran at ang kanilang pangilip, paglilingkod ay uh, lubos at tapos puso sa kanila, Tumugon ang pamahalaang bayan sa pamamagitan ng uh, kahilingan ng ating punong bayan sa sanggol ng bayan na magkaroon ng uh, ordinansa na mabigyan sila ng incentive retirement, retirement and loyalty uh, incentive para sa mga child development workers. Paano ito nalilip na yung sagawa? Ito ay tinignan namin ang, uh, ang kahalagahan ng kanilang contribution at tinignan namin ang dami ng taon ng paglilingkot. Kung kaya't uh, Uh, nakita namin na mahalaga itong incentive na ito kasi ito ay nakakapag-boost ng moral. Ito ay magsisimula sa sangkot taong paglilingkuran at bawat taon ng paglilingkod ay bibilangin at tutumbasan ng halaga. Sa ngayon ay pinag-uusapan na ito at ras ay kalawang living na kung kaya natutuwa ang inilingkod sa pagkakitoy para rin sa ating mga child development workers. Maliban pa dito, yung taon-taong incentive ay binibigay ng pamahal ng bayan sa kanya. So sa puntong ito, ah, uh, ang programa ng ECCD sa bayan ng San Antonio ay hindi magiging ganap at uh, kasiyasiya, kundi dahil sa pagtutulungan ng lahat ng tanggapan ng pamahalang bayan. Ngayon din, ang um, pasasalamat ko siyempre sa mga child development workers, mga sila talaga ang namuguna sa programang ito. Salamat din sa local government unit, sa pangunguna ni Mayor Eric Wagan, at sa sangguni ang bayan. Ganun din ang provincial government of Quezon, dahil ito nagpuprovide din sila ng incentive taon-taon sa ating child development workers. Ganun din siyempre ang DSWD4A dahil sila naman nagpo-provide ng lokang servisyo katulad ng Sugaran Tarot Daily Program at siyempre sa ECCD Council na patuloy at uh, hanggang sa ngayon ay binibigyan kami ng pagtutuwala upang ma-implement namin ng maayos ang uh, ECCD Program ayon sa ikinagda ng Council. 
Malaki ho ang utang na loob namin sa ECCB. Malaki rin po ang uh, naging kasanayan, hindi lamang ng punong bayan ng bayan sa Antonio, kundi lahat po na naglilingkod, yung pong commitment nila o commitment namin na wala man po kami sa panunungkulan, inananatili po o nakakasiguro kami na may maganda ang patutunguhan ng aming pong mga kapataan. Kaya tumaasa po kami na patuloy uh, na kami inyong susuportahan, patuloy po kami... Patuloy po kayong magsisilbing inspirasyon sa amin na makapag-isip ng iba't ibang paraan upang makasiguro na lalaki pong matalino, malusog at uh, uh, magagaling ito pong ating mga kabataan. Maraming maraming salamat. Mabuhay po ang early child care uh, and development program at umasa ko kayo na sa pamamagitan po ng itong mga programa ito ay uh, mananatili ho na magiging child-friendly ang bayan ng San Antonio na ito po'y matagal namin pinangahawakan, ang uh, Seal of Food Local Governance, na patuloy din po na binibigyan kami ng inspirasyon upang makapagbigay pa ng magandang paglilingkod sa iba't ibang aspeto pa po ng ating pamalan. Magandang uh, araw po at mabuhay po tayo na My warmest greetings to everyone. First and foremost, in behalf of the city government of Montilupa, I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to Rex Education and Early Childhood Care and Development Council for choosing Montilupa City and for giving us the limelight to showcase our best practices in early childhood care and development in this webinar series. In Montilupa, we are cognizant of the fact that the first four years of a child is a critical stage in their learning. Therefore, providing them with quality child care and giving them proper early childhood experiences during these formative years will have a significant effect in their life. Aside from that, other importance of early childhood care and development in our city is that its purpose aptly captures and responds to, all, to our city's vision of having educated, healthy, and God-loving people, which translate the holistic approach in child development. Our asset program enjoins the parents to take part in the process, which is very important most especially now that classes are being conducted online. The parents undergo various parenting seminars on the stress management, proper health and nutrition of the children, home teaching tactics, violence against women and children, among others. And most importantly, ESET program promotes the protection of the children and supports the right as provided in the Philippine Constitution, which states that the state shall defend the right of children to assistance, including proper care and nutrition, and special protection from all forms of neglect, abuse, cruelty, exploitation, and other conditions prejudicial to their development. Si Jenny Diuda Martado, the Division Head of Early Childhood Education Division here in our city of Montilupa. And our mayor is Mayor Jaime Arpes Nelly. He is called the Education Mayor because he gives so much pride to education. At kasama siyempre dyan, the basic of education, the root, which is the early childhood. The concept for me, or for the city, of early childhood is taking good care or seeing through all the needs of zero to four years old. That's according to R8 and 14 or the Early Years Act. We're very happy and we're very proud to say that before the Early Years Act, nabuo na po ang division ng early childhood sa nagsimula po ito noong 1998, nagkaroon po ng unang ordinansa. Uh, the ordinance was um, amended last 2004 
para po mabigyan pa po ng mas matinding diin at focus yung early childhood program po ng city. Here in Mundinlupa, naniniwala po kami na kung gusto namin magkaroon ng mga, ma, ng mga mabubuti at ng mga masisipag ng mga Mundinlupeño, dapat na sigurado po na yung unang edukasyon, which is in early childhood, ay mabigyan po ng ba, mabigyan po ng matinding pagbusisi na pagtingin at pag pag-aayos ng mga programa. Noong una pong nagkaroon kami ng division, binigyang pansin na po ang programa patungkol po sa early childhood. Nakapokus po ito sa apat na areas which is the health, nutrition, social services, and early education. The different department of the city ay nakakatulong po para sa early childhood program ng city. One, Uh, isang bagay po siguro na, ma- na masasabi ko kung nakakatuwa sa city namin is that we are, in, we are really connected to each other, interrelated yan. Hindi, if you really wanted help and then this help will come. from this city, uh, from this department, pwede kang mag-ask. That's why FIS, which is, I'm very, very proud and happy to say that the MIS is helping, help us to develop Please bear with us. Meron lang po tayong konting technical problem. Inaayos lang po ng ating uh, tech team ang ating uh, videos. Gising pa po ba lahat? Raise hand naman dyan kung gising pa tayo. <laughs> Ayan, okay. Uh, antayin po natin. We will uh, try to fix our uh, video presentation from the Muntinlupa uh, City. Okay. Go, go, go lang, sabi ni Miss uh, Winnie Henerosa to everyone. Yes, go, go, go lang tayo. Babalik din ang ating video. And uh, still here, Beverly. Wow, June Pearl, kissing heart. Ako muna ang, ayan, there you go. Sa apat na areas, which is the health, nutrition, social services, and early education. The different department of the city ay nakakatulong po para sa early childhood program ng city. One, uh, isang bagay po siguro na, ma- na masasabi ko kung nakakatuwa sa city namin is that we are, in, we are really connected to each other, interrelated yan. Hindi, if you really wanted help and then this help will come from the city, uh, from this department, pwede kang mag-ask. That's why FIS, which is... I'm very, very proud and happy to say that the MIS is helping help us to develop a database program for our city for our early childhood education division. So this database program helps us to basically disaggregate the different information or data needed po na aming po opisina. So once, actually hindi lang po needed ng office, Uh, we're very thankful for this database because it helped the teachers na, ma, na ma, um, gaanan din sila dun sa mga ginagawa nilang trabaho. Why? Because uh, apart from the basic information na, bin, na inilalagay o isinasubmit or ini-encode dun sa database na mas madali nang masegregate lahat ng information. 
the teachers who conduct the teachers conducting the uh, ECCD checklist. Alam po ng mga teachers, we need to compute and then after the computation, you need to know the score of the child and then after knowing the score of the child, kailangan mo pa yung i-interpret ano yung saan siya average, saan siya mahina, saan siya advanced. But because of the database program that we have, the MIS of the city developed for us. So once the ilagay lang teacher yung age ng bata and then just the raw score, the database program will compute everything. And then the database program will interpret kung ano na yung estado ng bata doon sa seven domains. Kaya napakadali. Also for the nutritional status of the children, once na ilagay yung teacher the height and then the weight of the child, of course, present na dun yung, yung age nila, the system will automatically compute if the child is um, average din yung kanyang uh, nutritional status or kung underweight, severely underweight or stunted. It may, uh, it may for them easier dun sa database program. Also, pag there will be agencies asking for us for numbers, like how many children, how many boys, how many girls from the different um, sessions from high 10, grade A1, and grade A2, we can easily give the numbers. That's just the numbers because of the Data Privacy Act. So, paano ba namin napapangalagaan yung Data Privacy Act because of this, uh, uh, dito po sa database na meron kami. So, yung database na nakakakita lang po na information ng bata ay yung teacher na nag-encode and then directly, na-download po siya, na-transmit po siya sa MIS. The MIS gives us a pass, password or a code na tanging o pisig na lang po namin. And if per needs, yung LCTC can, can access to that para masigurado po namin yung Data Privacy Act ng mga bata kasi everything nandun po yun. So aside from that, we also have right now during the pandemic, a teacher is not really an IT, pero one of the teachers na meron po kami dito, uh, siya rin yung nagbigalo para magkaroon kami ng mga Google Form na yung mga teacher, yung mga parents can register online. So kahit hindi rin walang face-to-face, -face, they can register online. So meron din po ang CT niyan, uh, meron din po ang SMT, uh, division po ng bagay niya yan. Which is very, very uh, convenient po for all of us. Um, basically, the Early Childhood Education Division or the Early Childhood Care and Development or the ESSEN program of the city, I would say na we really wanted to be at best po dito sa ginagawa po namin. Uh, patuloy at patuloy po kami mag-isip what advances what breakthroughs ang pwede pa namin ibigay. Because as we all know, tayo po ang may hand din, ang nag-cater doon sa mga pinakabata. Zero to four is nandun siya sa, nandun siya sa most crucial stage ng buhay ng tao. Sabi nga nila, uh, you can make or break a child, but actually can make or break a person a human kapag ka hindi maayos yung programa na kinabilangan niya nung bata pa siya. Naniniwala ako, naniniwala ang city that if we invest on kids, everybody wins. Kaya uh, we really wanted to, ha to have a better multilupa. So if we wanted to have a better multilupa, we will start at a very early age. Kaya we are, we are really focusing, the city is really serious on focusing on the welfare of the city for four years old dito po sa early childhood program ng city. With that, the city government of Montilupa, including all of its departments, will continue to uphold early childhood care and development programs in our city towards the realization of children's rights and in making Montilupa a child-friendly society. Again, thank you very much and may God bless us all. 
Hello again, fellow Educampions. Ang galing ng ating mga presenters. I hope you are all inspired and have learned a lot from them. Bigay naman tayo ng virtual applause sa ating mga presenters. We have the Mabalakat City, Pampanga, headed by Honorable Mayor Crisostomo Garbo, the Municipality of San Antonio, Quezon, headed by the Honorable Mayor Eric Wagan, and Muntinlupa City, headed by the Honorable Mayor Jaime de la Rosa Presnedi. Maraming, maraming salamat po. I hope we all had a fruitful afternoon of learning and inspiration and kindly fill out the feedback form nandiyan po sa inyong chat box and provide your email address, lalo na po kung kayo ay may karagdagang tanong pa para po masagot namin yan at masagot ng ACCD at may email back po sa inyo ang sagot. Join us in the next episode of the EduCampion Local Governance Webinar Series as we continue the discussion on early childhood care and development in the Philippines. ACCD in action naman ang susunod. We hope you can all join us in the succeeding episodes of the EduCampion Local Governance Series to know more about what your LGU, particularly your barangay, is doing for you. This has been your host, P. Yeshuk Velasco, saying alamin, matuto, makilahok, para sa bata, para sa babamayan, para sa bayan. See you all soon. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Bob. Okay na po tayo. Yun. All right. Thanks, okay everyone. Na. Okay na lahat. Maraming salamat po. Yes po. Patingin okay. naman, ang, vid Pat naman ang video niyo. Patingin na magsalita. Patingin na mga video niyo. Patingin na po. So okay na tayo. Recording pa sa atin. There. Picture naman tayo. Uy, picture tayo. Picture tayo lahat. Congratulations.